On the meet and greet, are you doing like a, a meal thing or snacks or? 
maybe light refreshment snacks, something like that, just finger type stuff. Nothing major at all. Okay. Any other questions? I'll give you just a brief background on this gentleman. He's 46 years old, uh, out of Rhode Island College. His first wife passed away from an illness. He remarried, has a 40 year old daughter. And uh, the guy's watched him the other night on YouTube. Yeah, I forget the name of the church you can get on YouTube and also uh, pull him up and watch his sermon on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. What time was that again? Oh, I'm sorry. Saturday? Saturday's 3 to 5. I'm sorry, I did not say the time. 3 to 5 on Saturday. And then it was presenting a sermon at 11 o'clock on May 2nd. Why does he want to move? Uh, I think it's time. I've heard this more often from these guys than they've never heard before. It's the season to move. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's something that came out of some of their literature and they're all using that slogan. No one's staying in their job 30 years like you used to. Just right, yeah. Back to yeah. Very few of them have long term. Mm -hmm. In fact, this gentleman is uh, associate of Chris Butler. Mm -hmm. And it turned out Chris Butler's been in Martinsburg for 20 months. At least that's what he said the other day when I talked to him. And he recommended this guy come. Chris is current while he's born was. He's he's as sound as a safe. And that he'd be a good match for Tomahawk, and Tomahawk would be a good match for him. So that's what he feels like. Thank you and the committee for all the, the work you've done to get candidates in here. We appreciate it. Um, speak, it, 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 it's May the ninth. The obviously the ballots would be due for this gentleman. And also, it's my understanding that Sunday school starting back up May 9th? Okay. Um, today, Ed Schwartz is going to be uh, preaching. And then, um, just to give you a, a glimpse of the future, uh, next week, uh, Tim Barino from the Rescue Mission will be back. He was here last week. He was fantastic. He was really good. So he'll be here next week. And then the week after, uh, Chris Thornton will be here. So there's your schedule for the next couple of weeks. Um, prayer requests, there's a lot of them, folks. Um, Phyllis Whitaker, uh, Peggy Dawson, Jim Starlifer, Gary Stadler, Tommy Stadler, Butch Murphy, uh, the family of Karen Hyatt McGraw, family of Sylvia Collins, family of Max Snyder, and Donna Faith. Is there anybody to add to that? Yes, Miss Stokes. I don't know if Jeff Mellor, his wife, Jeff Mellor, Well, you keep this family in prayer. I know the viewing is this evening, this afternoon, this evening. I've had two colleagues at work this week lose a parent. It's uh, nothing a good year, not cool for people losing parents. So, um, anybody that's lost a loved one, you know that's that's very, very, very difficult. And, well, one lady, her father's very elderly and is in the Boston area, and it's, it's uh, if you're familiar with what's going on, that, that whole part of the country's locked down. She's having the dickens of a time getting, even getting, in, getting up there to take care of the arrangements and all that. So um, just keep those folks in your prayers. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I, I talked to Tiffany Wallet yesterday, and she said uh, Daniel started a new job. She just wanted us to keep him in, in our prayers as he transitions into a new job. Um, this person lives in Florida, but it's a friend of ours, uh, a Bob Peters, is having intestinal heart. Anybody else? <coughs> starting up the uh, mowing back here at the graveyard. Jason is heading it. If anybody is interested in helping, even if it's just one time this 
summer, just get a hold of Jason or me, and we'll set you up. Thanks. Um, speaking of Jason, uh, Wednesday night Bible study, uh, this Wednesday, 6.30, uh, the case for a creator, Lee Strobel, Jason's saying it's a, a six-week study, so that will take you to the beginning of your summer. Uh, you know, Mr. Strobel's really, anything he does is really good, so um, if you can make it that, I'm sure it would be a blessing to you. If there's not anything else, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day and the beautiful spring day that you've made for us to enjoy. Uh, just help us to be glad in it, Lord. Uh, we pray for the numerous, numerous people that have been mentioned here this morning and over the course of the week. You know the situations. Uh, you're the great physician. Uh, you have the, the power to heal. If, if it be your will, Lord, uh, we'd be ask you to be with uh, everyone who's lost a loved one over the course of the last week or two or any period of time for that matter, Lord. Just be with them, give them peace on, on their heart, and be with their families, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the public committee, and we pray for um, the traveling safety of Mr. Thornton as he comes here in, in a few weeks to deliver a trial message, and we ask that uh, we hear his message with open minds and open hearts and make a, a prayerful decision about whether or not he's a, a good match for, for Tomahawk Christian Church. Lord, we lift up our country this morning, uh, especially lift up, lift up our police officers. Uh, it seems like they're being undermined at every turn, Lord. We ask that you be with them and keep them safe so they can go back home to their families in the evening. Lord, we just pray for our nation as a whole and our leaders. Please help them to make good decisions. I pray that you do Mr. Schwartz this morning as he brings the message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Time for our first song. If you'd like to stand, we'll be singing since Jesus came in my heart. <laughs> Jesus. 
the communion, and then Mr. Schwartz will be bringing it up. and they are yours. He did not do that because he thought we were worthy. He suffered and took our place so we have a chance to be in heaven for eternal life. So as we take this juice and this cracker, remember what he has done for us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for you taking our place on that cross. We thank you for the opportunity for us to have eternal life through your blood, your sacrifice. Help us remember, Lord, not only today, not only at this time, but throughout our entire life, what you have done for us so we can be with you. In this word, I pray that in Jesus' name. Thank you.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, um, there are many opportunities always for us to study and grow stronger in our Christian walk. But we need to stay physically, mentally, and spiritually fit to win others to Christ. In you know, my introduction, I'm going to call this uh, jumping into the deep end. Um, I want to take time, I don't see Mark Cagle here today, but I want to take time to thank him. And, and we all need to thank him because he's really been good about continuing to uh, uh, fill the pulpit each Sunday. Ken uh, Birch really helped us out a lot and I really enjoyed his messages. And, and then we had uh, Tim Dorino here last Sunday, and then he plans to be here again this coming Sunday. So, um, but anyway, Mark has really been good at coordinating this. But when we were at our board meeting, and Mark, this past Tuesday, and Mark said, you know, I don't have anybody for this Sunday yet. And um, he was excited really thinking about that. Well, I wasn't thinking at that time I was going to but <laughs> uh, anyway, I went home and then I think I, I, think I drank too much caffeine uh, that day because um, I drank too much tea and then, then it bored me out drinking coffee. Well, as it normally happens to me, I, I, I get initially I go right to sleep. Well, then a few hours later I woke up and, and I can't, I can't um, go back to sleep. So I'm just laying there and laying there. Anyway, I start thinking, well, okay, maybe it's a good time. I'll think about a communion meditation. So I start thinking and some things I would say, and I'm thinking, and, and I'm thinking, well, this might be pretty good. And before long, I'm thinking, uh-oh, this is going to be way too long for a communion meditation. Well, so I thought maybe, well, maybe I could do a um, morning worship service. So anyway, I woke up, yeah, I woke up early that morning, I started working on it, and then I texted Mark, and I said, hey, if you don't have anybody for Sunday, I'd like to go ahead and do it. I'd like to put me in church. I want to do it. So, um, anyway, he, he texted me back and said, well, he said, I've been kind of thinking about doing it also, but I don't know if I'm quite ready. He said, let me text you later in the day, well, he said, because I might do it. I said, okay. So, anyway, later in the day, he said, okay, you're up. Uh, so, I said, okay, I'll do it. So, but this kind of reminds me of, um, uh, like, when my mom uh, took us as kids to a Red Cross swim lesson over at Shepherd. Oh, well. How's that relate? Well, Mom never learned to swim, but she said she always wanted us kids to learn to swim in case we fell in the river or fell in somebody's water, we'd be able to swim and wouldn't drown. So anyway, she took us, and my brother and I were there, and we had an instructor named Leo, and Leo was a very, very, uh, very good swimmer, and he could do some terrific dives off that big diving board over there. And that it was at Sarah Creed Hall, which is now a parking lot area, basically. Anyway, there's a really nice pool there. Now they have a nice pool at the wellness center, but this pool had an 11 foot uh, deep end. And as I was taking the lessons, um, there came the day where Leo took us to the 11 foot deep end, and he said, this is your day to jump in and swim. <laughs> this is after he already worked with us on the shallow end. So anyway, I did jump in and I did swim, but I'm not an accomplished swimmer even today. I, like Jason Ashton, he, he can swim, he's on the swim team. Anyway, but I can't, I can't swim. So this is my deep end day once again. So I uh, hope I can still swim. So uh, please bear with me, here I go. And this is a good time for a prayer. So please pray with me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can be in your house. Please help me to uh, guide and direct me to say the things and be in accordance with your will, in accordance with scripture. And it would, uh, Go to people's hearts and they would be able to, to understand and remember some of these things that I say. Watch your brothers on our prayer list. Watch our whole congregation as we search for a new minister also. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, can you influence someone's life for the Lord? Certainly this applies to me also. Can I influence someone's life for the Lord? And as humans, before we consider or choose, we'll, we want to know what we're going to gain. Uh, winning something about Christ doesn't have to be such a daunting task. We can treat others with kindness, kindness, forgiveness, speak out about God's love for us. Each of us have various talents. We share the faith with non-believers and Christians alike, which uh, we each benefit positively. 
I told a little story here about a friend of mine. I had a, a friend who uh, lives around Shepherdstown, he and his wife. Anyway, his name was Timothy. And he's a very, um, he's a very good Christian. He really knows the Bible. He can play musical instruments. He's gone to a, a University of Boston music, and he can just all over the keyboard on the piano. He plays the guitar. He plays the trumpet, clarinet. Probably other ones too, but uh, but he's also very he studies the Bible very well. He's really uh, big deep into the Bible. He really knows the Old Testament and the New Testament. Anyway, but he he looks to me when um, he has something wrong with his car. But he knows I, I've been fixing some things on cars. So he he called me up the other day. He said, "Hey, um, he said I don't have a problem with my Subaru. The brakes aren't working right. They're making an awful screeching, growling noise and and." And my ABS and like brake lights on, and I don't know what's, what's wrong. He said, Can I bring it over? I said, Yeah, bring it over, Timothy. Uh, we'll take a look at it. So he, he comes in, and sure enough, it's screeching, make all kinds of noises. And uh, I said, let me, let me take it for a little drive and, and see what it feels like. And so I was doing that, and I said, Well, let's pull the left front wheel off first. It sounds like it's definitely in the front. So we pulled that off. I looked at the, the rotor, the calipers, the pads, the pads have good good amount of wear left on them and I looked at the ABS sensor wire and everything everything looks good on that side. So I said, okay, let's let's pull it right front. Well, as soon as I pulled that jack that side I pulled off the wheel, the axle nut just about fell off my hand. It was completely unscrewed and just sitting there. So this I said to the ear, I think this is definitely a problem. I think it'll be alright. So I got some anesthesia briefs. I torqued that knot back on there nice and tight, and I staked it with a punch and a hammer right in the middle of that area. Anyway, I got everything nice and tight. I said, I think you'll be fine now. So, and it was, and, it, and uh, he texted me the next day, yeah, it's great. Uh, so, there are things I can help him out, but, but he also helps me out a lot. If we go away on vacation, he'll take care of our animals, he'll take care of our pets. Um, he, uh, he's just a wonderful person, he and his wife. And you'll find him many times on the streets of Chepstown, right on Durham Street. He'll be playing his guitar, singing Christian hymns with people all around. And he, he's not a bit bashful about it. He's very, he's right out there. I mean, he's a witness. And, and that, I like to have his witnessing ability because he's really good at it. Um, so we got to encourage our fellow Christians. Let me read a, a few scriptures here. Um, Romans uh, chapter 1, verse... 12, this is from the, uh, new, uh, from the King James Version, King James Version. Romans chapter 1, verse 12. That is, that I might be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of you and me. So this carries the idea of a mutual strengthening brought about by Paul's ministry among believers. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Let's also go to Luke chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. So, I was thinking about this. Um, what if we had the ability to trade somebody? We, we all have our own um, niche of things we become good at, but uh, if I could trade Timothy some of my mechanical and car repair skills, for some of his uh, his witnessing ability, and he's, he's able to get right out there among people. He's not afraid of it at all, and I'm more bashful about that. But anyway, in his musical ability, which um, I always enjoy, but I, I don't play an instrument yet. So, um, but it doesn't work that way. It, you just um, even if, if we could trade, it wouldn't happen because Timothy wouldn't do it first of all because he'd be on the losing end because. His, his values are worth more than mine in that respect. And the other thing is, uh, it's not possible. The thing is, we have, to, we have to invest. We have to invest our time. We have to invest um, to learn about things. We have to make an investment. And that's how we learn. To play a musical instrument, you can't just buy one and then think that you're going to pick it up real quick and use it. Yes, you have to practice. You have to practice many, many hours to really get good. And Robin knows when she plays the organ that it's just taking many hours of, um, of her practice to be able to do that. And she does it beautifully. So, um, and for example, um, 
I can buy this Bible, but that doesn't mean I know everything in this Bible. Certainly not. I, I can buy the Bible, but then I have to spend the time to study it. So we have to make our investment. Um, another thing I'm interested in is uh, blacksmithing. And I have a lot of tools for it that I've collected, but I haven't done much actual blacksmithing yet. But I'm still interested in it. And I got a little S hook here that I made. <laughs> it's just a little thing. But um, but I need to do a lot more work. I mean, I can, I can, uh, I have a forge. I can start it. I can uh, get the coal burning. I can get the coal red hot. I can make the metal hot. I can put the metal ground stock on a anvil with the hardy. I can, I can cut it hot. I can start forming it, but does that make me a blacksmith? No, I would have to spend uh, hundreds of hours and really thousands of hours to be a real blacksmith that really knows what he's doing, making things. Uh, but I do appreciate what they what can be made, and I love uh, farm tools that are made by blacksmiths. If you see, if you, uh, I've bought some of those, and like uh, kitchen tools that are made by blacksmiths, and hardware for homes. I have some examples. Um, here's a some German style latches that are made uh, by blacksmiths and some of these, and they still work. <laughs> they they uh, have a night latch uh, and they have like a pad that's kind of like a mushroom shape. They're called uh, elbow latches. You can push down on these and you can move the door if you have things in your hand um, to carry and you can use these. But they're I think they're beautiful and they still work. And anyway, I collect my have different ones. But to make something like this, I would really have to invest a lot of time. But the, uh, the center bolt still works. I don't know why I'm going to still use these, but uh, I guess maybe the key's too big to put in her pocket. <laughs> but you, you can see these um, in Shepherdstown on some of the houses. They're still there, some of the buildings. Um, if you go to Betty Brown's restaurant, there's a side door. And I had to chuck because um, the girls that work in there, the waitresses, in the wintertime, they'll stick their coats on that leaf of that mushroom shaped leaf, they'll use it for a coat rack. But they're still usable. But to, to be a good blacksmith, we have to have an investment. So let, uh, let's go to some verses um, from John. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 21. And I'm going to be, as I go through these verses, there's a little, I'm going to do some explaining of the verse within the verse, so I'll be seeing a little, uh, a little more sometimes about the, about the verse. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. So this pertains to the great commission of taking the gospel of Jesus to the world. Then we go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So here's where it says to be ready and always be ready to give an answer. But we can only know the answers if we study the book. Okay, so we have to study the book. We have to, uh, we can study the book on our own. We, if, if, if you like studying it on your own, it works too. It works. And you can, um, if you read the verse and you say, I don't really know what that's uh, talking about. Well, there's a lot of commentary books that are always available. There's, there's a lot of commentary books we can study. But it's also good to study in groups, such as uh, Jason Action's group. He's, he's a Bible study here on Wednesday nights. Um, it's a great opportunity to study the Word and to meet in small groups. Or like Timothy, a lot of times he'll, he'll text me or call me and say, Hey, uh, how about if we get together and do, do some Bible study? I've got any time today. And sometimes I'll say no, but... Uh, to say yes, and I always enjoy when he comes over. So, um, to invest our, our time. So, um, as we get older, uh, retirement is not a time of disengagement. You may have been a job for many years, and yes, it'll be time to disengage from that job, that type of work you might have done, but it'll be time to re-engage in other things. And we always have to uh, continue to, to um, broaden our, our minds and, and doing something different. And by the way, um, I recently know that uh, Tony Bettelini has just uh, recently retired, so congratulate him when you see him. He's uh, recently retired from the fire department out here. Um, and some people ask me, well, how do you like retirement? Of course, I've been retired 
some years now. And I say, I really enjoy it. I say, it, it just, it, it still seems too good to be true. But it is, but unless uh, I start spending too much money and the Lord tells me time to get back to work, that could happen. So I gotta be careful later. <laughs> Uh, the other day, I was downstairs, and I went upstairs, and I got to the top of the stairs, and I thought, okay, what did I come up with? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, the brain book, and I'm reading a book about the brain, so I was up there to get my brain book. Anyway, <laughs> this book, and I really am reading this book, it, it, it's, a, it's uh, written by Dr. Uh, Daniel Eamon, and I don't know if some of you might have heard, but he, he does, um, he's done specials on public TV is fundraisers about the brain. Uh, but this book is called The End of Mental Illness by Dr. Daniel Amen. He's a neuroscientist and a, a brain doctor. Anyway, he's also a Christian. It, it said that in page, I think it was 94 of the book I'm reading, that uh, he proclaimed he is a Christian and he wanted everyone to know that. But he also said that that's a good thing because it helps us to uh, stay connected with God, our, our Christian faith, by engaging in daily prayers, meditations, service, and attending church with our families. Um, so much of this book is about exercise, diet, proper blood flow to the oxygen, oxygen to the brain, uh, proper blood flow to oxygen so we can ward off dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So you may ask, okay, how does this brain health deal with Christianity? Well, to help others, we have to stay active. We have to be active physically and spiritually. A uh, better brain is a uh, better health, increasing our happiness and our ability to help others. Um, which reminds me of the story of the healthy Christians. Anyway, there were, there were two men that, that had been, um, they'd been friends since a young age, and they were always very athletic, very competitive. They would, they would run, they would run for miles and miles, they'd be on those, uh, bikes and they would they would ride for miles and miles and, and they did that and they continued to do that as they got older and they got older and uh, as we all do and then they, they lived to a, a long long life each of them but one died first and then shortly after the other one died and then they're they're in heaven and they're walking in heaven and, and the one says wow look look at this city of gold even these streets are gold. And there's emeralds over here. This is just, this is beautiful. This is really nice. And then, they're over to heaven, and, and the other one said, just think, if we would have quit eating all that oatmeal and, and vegetables and, and fruits and seeds and nuts, we could have been up here 20 years sooner. <laughs> so, so we have to remember our, our thoughts and actions are all connected. We need to be careful with them. Uh, when we start getting upset about something, something's happening in our day that's upsetting us, ask yourself, does this have eternal value? If it doesn't, let it go. Earl Wilson, a journalist, said one way to get high, high, one way to get high blood pressure is to go mountain climbing over molehills. <laughs> Some good ways to stay mentally fit and increase blood flow is to spend about 10 to 20 minutes a day in prayer, meditation, and study of God's Word, which as a result keeps you spiritually fit as well. When we stop learning, our brains start dying. George Bernard Shaw said, We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Let's think about that a minute again. We don't grow old. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. So stay playful. Um, let's study some of the Bible verses for uh, rewards for God's people. Um, these scriptures are full of rewards. Uh, bear with me. There are several scriptures here. And also standing up here, you can't, you're wrong with um, the scripture. So let's go over some scripture. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, so this presents Paul's using symbols. The first three are materials which will stand the test of fire, symbolic of the Word of God, which is the standard. Wood, hay, stubble will not stand the test of fire. Every man's work shall be made manifest at the judgment seat of Christ. For the day shall declare it, the time of the judgment seat of Christ, because it 
shall be revealed by fire, the fire of God's word, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay, so you, you've heard about being tried by fire. And um, that means like uh, when you're, when you, with gold and silver, um, when they come out of the ground or they're, out, or they're, they're not, uh, or there's a nugget, even it may, it's not gonna be pure, pure gold, It'll have to be heated and tested by fire. So um, it has to be heated into a molten form and then the impurities, which is called the dross. And I know Mike McCain remembers it. We talked about this in the Sunday School class. This is the dross. The dross is the impurities that, that float to the top. And then you skim that scum off. You skim off the scum, which is the dross. And then right left with it is a pure metal or a gold, silver, other metals too. Um, so, um, fire, in the Greek, fire in the Greek is pure and speaks of the ability of Christ, who will be the judge and who, will, who sees to everything we do. Christ sees, he knows what's in our minds. He alone knows our very motives. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So this pertains to that which will be eternal. Although we aren't told what it will be, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, refers to the loss of reward, but not the loss of salvation. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Actually, this means the person is saved despite the fire. While the fire of the word of God will definitely burn up in proper works, it will not touch our salvation, that being in Christ and the cross. So now let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. <laughs> and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, proclaiming the fact that the Lord, who is being faithfully served, will at the same time render just dues. For you serve the Lord Christ. Everything we do, irrespective of what it is, to be done with the idea that it is for the Lord and the Lord alone. Uh, let's now read Matthew chapter 10, verses 41 and 42. He who receives a prophet in his name, in his name there of a prophet, because he is a true prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man, man in the name of a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward on a righteous mission. And whoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones, those believers, Cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple, of, in the name of a disciple, because he is a follower of Christ. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. A reward is guaranteed. And sometimes in, in uh, poorer countries, we're talking about here giving just a cup of water. Um, some poor people have, they just have almost nothing material things to be able to give to someone else, but there could be a critical time when, when somebody's hurt or somebody needs water and they can't get to the well where you can be as a Christian and haul water to them. That is a, that could be a life-saving thing in some instances. Anyway, God will reward this. So now let's go back to the Old Testament book of Daniel, uh, chapter 12, verse 3, and read more about the reward for the righteous. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever, the wise are they who live for God, and they do everything they can to take the gospel to others. The firmament is the, uh, is the expanse above the earth. In other words, the expanse of heaven is the firmament. So let's read more about taking the gospel to others. Go to Mark chapter 9, verse 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Refers to the healing, to the, refers to helping take the gospel to others. All help perspectives will be rewarded, no matter how small the help might be. Uh, please go back to Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone who has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall re receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. This is freely given on acceptance of Christ. So, let's see. So, go back to our original question. Can you influence someone's life for the Lord? Absolutely you can. 
There are many ways we can work to help lead others to Christ. But being a Christian that encourages others to Christ, here are uh, five things to remember when leading a person to Christ. Focus on Jesus as God's Son and resurrected Savior. Invite the individual to receive the wonderful gift of salvation. And read John chapter 3, verse 16 with it. So we all know John chapter 3, 16. For God so loved the world, and, and this presents the kind of love, the God kind of love. And he gave his only begotten Son. He gave him up to the cross, for that is what it took to redeem humanity. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the next one, to the individual, present the promises of acceptance, forgiveness, assurance, eternal life. We are each fully accepted and entirely forgiven. Read John chapter 6, verses 37 and 40. All who the Father gives me shall come to me, refers to all, whoever, whomever they may be, whether Israelites, Gentiles, Pharisees, scoffers, harlots, or even the very castaways of the devil. And him who comes to me, I will no wise cast out. So this proclaims to all a promise of unparalleled proportion. No one has ever been turned away, and no one ever will be turned away. And this is the will of him who sent me, speaks of the Father's desires, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. One must see or comprehend the Lord Jesus Christ, which refers to what he did at the cross, and believe on him, and is never doing, but rather believing. And I will raise him up at the last day of guaranteed resurrection. Then invite the seeker to pray in Jesus' name, and then act of faith. Read John chapter 16, verse 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. So while Jesus was with them, the work on the cross had not yet been accomplished. So his name could not be used then as it is used now. Ask, you shall receive, ask in his name, which refers to the fact that we understand that all things are given unto us through and by what Christ did at the cross, that you, that your joy may be full. It can only be full when we properly understand the cross. So then also help the new believer get started in their walk with Jesus and their Christian walk by providing support, fellowship uh, with them and with other Christians, and providing them resources. Give them a new Bible. Um, I know we've done that before uh, when there are baptisms here. Uh, it's a good thing to give them a new Bible so they'll, they'll have uh, the Word right there to go with right away to use. Um, Invite the person to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Read the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, the Great Commission. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So ye therefore and teach all so go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So back again to our original question. Can you influence someone's life for the Lord? Absolutely you can. How many times it will take people years to accept Jesus into their hearts and lives? Uh, we may only be planting the seed at times, and sometimes we may not see it come to fruition. If it takes years, and finally, you help convince someone to accept Jesus. Was it worth your efforts? Absolutely. What is eternal life worth to just one soul? Everything possible. What if it's taken years, and the person you work with regarding this is unmoved and won't accept Jesus? Was it worth your efforts? Absolutely. You have done your work as a witness, sharing God's word, and it is up to each individual to accept Jesus into their lives. Sadly, some will not. But we should never give up on them, possibly changing their minds. We need to continue others in their walk. I've noticed, uh, while I was listening to the radio recently, a new song by Rascal Flatts, and it's uh, the title of the song is How They Remember You. The first time I heard this song playing, I wasn't paying much attention to the lyrics until he sang the line, it wasn't until I saw my daddy's name in stone I knew. So I pictured in my mind the son standing in a cemetery looking at a, at a uh, freshly filled grave 
with the new headstone, he wrote it with his father's name, which is the same as the son's last name. So he's, this is powerful stuff. I mean, um, and this, I know um, if you lose a friend to an accident, someone dies, someone has cancer, or, or however we lose people as we go through our lives, um, it really affects us. Uh, it may be a family member, or it may be a friend, or, or somebody you work with, but it affects us deeply. It makes it, us think of our own mortality. Um, so then the, this song was going on, and then he sang, um, he knew, okay, then he sang on in the song, and he knew it isn't a question of if people will remember you, it's how will they remember you when you're gone. So, how do they remember you? Did you stand or did you fall? Did you build a bridge or build a wall? Did you hide your love or give it all? What did you do? What did you do? Did you make them laugh or make them cry? Did you quit or did you try? Did you dream or let, or let them die? Did you live your dream or let them die? What did you choose? What did you choose? When it all comes down, it ain't if, it's how they remember you. Now this isn't all those song lyrics, but I think we all get the picture. It's how we live our lives and what we did with our life that's important and what we remembered after we're gone from this earth. We want to stay active while we're here mentally, physically, spiritually, enjoy the race to be encouragers and share the word to bring others to Christ. Are you prepared to give your mind, heart, and soul to run the long race for Christ Jesus? And uh, we're offering an invitation as an opportunity. If there's anyone here today that has not accepted Jesus into their lives, please find the courage to take that first step forward. We will gladly be with you and help you start your own your Christian walk with the Lord Jesus. We'll pray with you. If there's anyone interested in that, um, it's available today. Today. Let's see. Um, do we have any other announcements? Does anybody know the Jim talked about what's going on with the with the um, minister search. Well, um, all of you, please have a, a safe and enjoyable week. And uh, John uh, Schaefer is going to close in prayer. We're going to have a we're going to have a song a song also.
pray with me. Lord, please let us be able to uh, take this message that we heard today and take it through our daily lives this week, Lord, to be able to reflect on you, Lord. Uh, let us be able to remember all the things that you've been able to provide and give us, Lord. The freedom to be able to worship you today, Lord. And we thank you for everything you have.